another source of bad tendons that we do need to talk about because you guys need to be aware of what you're doing to yourselves. And uh, it's hard to avoid this, though, is what's called a Maillard or Maillard reaction, depending. It's, he was a French guy. I didn't take French in school. I'm going to say it's Maillard. Um, Anyway, he was a food scientist who came up with this concept. Um, so this is the browning of food or the searing of steak. The same thing is happening to your tendons and all of the protein in your body. Okay. We are undergoing a daily constant browning reaction, which is non-enzymatic crosslinks. So these are dysfunctional crosslinks that are happening between collagen or other proteins and sugars. Okay. We don't want that. It might make your eggs taste good. It makes your steak smell good and taste good. But think about that going on in your body. Not so good. We don't want that. It is happening. This is aging. This happens faster in diabetics because they have a lot more sugar floating around. So they have rapid aging. Um, but this is something you need to know about. So what is it? It's advanced glycation end products. So advanced means it's along a step. So there's one step, two step, three step. It's a third step in the formation of these monster proteins. Glycation, sugar is involved, and end products. So these are the, the final result of this advanced series of chemical reactions that occur between proteins or amino acids and sugar in the setting of heat. Um, and that's why, you know, when you're caramel or I'm sorry, when you're browning steak or whatever, that's the amino acids mixing with sugars, either from the ingredient itself or if you add it. Um, the same thing is happening at a much slower rate. Obviously, you're not cooking yourself in six minutes like you can sear a steak, right? But it takes, guess what, about 40 to 50 to 60 years for this to get to the point where people begin to notice it clinically. Thus, that graph. So if you can control how many of these things you eat, you can slow down that rate. More importantly, if you could control your blood glucose levels, you slow down aging because there's not enough sugar floating around to do these chemical, bond, um, chemical binding with the amino acids in your body, and you don't form as many advanced glycation end products. The bottom right there, sorry, real quick, is flavor. So this is huge in the food science world. They've actually found different types of advanced glycation end products and, and know which ones give what flavor. Caramel, popcorn, uh, red meat, whatever. And they can actually make these and add it to foods. So it's, it's a little scary, but even the crust of your bread technically can be considered an advanced glycation end product. Animal, animal protein and plant protein make two different issues, though. Animal protein by far worse and forms a lot of these. Okay, go on. And it's happening everywhere. So if any of you are diabetic or no diabetics, you, everyone always says, oh, see, well, guess what that is? It's just an advanced glycation end product marker on a red blood cell. So the reason they look at the red blood cells, so hemoglobin, that's the HB part, and then A1C, that's the abnormal glycation end product on the red blood cell. The reason they look at that is because red blood cells generally live for about 120 days. And so if you catch red blood cell, you can more or less get an average blood sugar level for the past three months. So it gives you a more accurate picture where somebody's really living. So in other words, somebody might be fasting and then go get their blood work and their blood glucose looks good, right? But then you check their A1C and it's 7.5 or 8. Well, then you can look and this chart shows you. A blood glucose or A1C of 7 means you've had an average blood glucose of 150 every day for the past three months. So not so good. So what you really want is five or less. That's what your A1C should be. In America, we consider six normal, but in a lot of other healthier countries, they do not. Because 115 is still too high. Why? Because you're going to be forming these everywhere throughout your body, not to mention all the other issues that sugar does in terms of insulin and all that. But you just don't want a lot of advanced glycation end products. That's why we have wrinkles. That's why we get weak. It's why our tendons get stiff. It's why we get tendonitis. You're basically making everything stiff and dysfunctional because of these monster proteins that are formed because there's too much sugar floating around. All right. So every time you take a bite of that guy, that steak, which is filled with advanced glycation end products, you're going to do this to your tendons. So the right tendon is a nice, healthy, white, shiny, glistening tendon. And then the one on the left, they put sugar in and heated it. And that's what happened. It browned. So I've actually operated on people where I go in advanced diabetics 
and all of their tendon stuff looks like that. It's yellow. It doesn't look quite right. It's very stiff. It's hard to cut through. Um, and it's because of years of depositing this browning reaction on the long-lived proteins in your body, like collagen. So some, you know, some of the collagen in your Achilles tendon has been there for years and years and years. Um, so the very, the longer lived the protein, the more likely it is to collect these advanced glycation end products. And it took them a while, but they figured out, I want to say about a decade ago, maybe a little bit longer, that the ones we eat do directly transfer into your serum and they do deposit in tissue. So vegetables are much better than animal protein for avoiding these things. And that's because, the next slide. So there's caramelization and there's the Maillard or Maillard reaction. So you have to have protein and carbs or sugar, free sugars, free amino acids to get that browning reaction. Caramelization is just sugars, okay? So if you eat a predominantly vegetable-based diet, it's gonna be heavier with fiber and complex carbs and lighter on the protein load. So you'll form fewer advanced glycation end products over time. Um, one of the reasons that a plant-based or plant-based diet is probably better for you over time. Um, I'm not totally against animal protein. You all know I love the Mediterranean diet. I just think we should have a ratio that's skewed way in favor of vegetables and fruits. And this is one of the reasons. So advanced glycation end products are the problem with poor tendon function, okay? It's why you feel stiff. It's why things don't glide properly. It's why you have dysfunctional muscle movements, okay? Because it's not just happening in the tendon, it also happens in the muscle, but to a much larger degree in the longer lived collagen bundles of the tendon. It's why we're weak. It's why we have pain. There are actually receptors for advanced glycation end products. They're called rages. R-A-G-E. So when an advanced glycation end product hits a receptor for this, it basically starts a cascade of damage signaling. And then the body goes into this damage control mode or like inflammatory mode, but it's not a good inflammation. It just keeps going and more reactive oxygen species are made and more inflammatory mediators. And then the pathway for inflammation, the NFKB genetic pathway is turned on and none of the healing NRF pathways are turned on. All of this because of advanced glycation end products. So one of the best ways to treat tendonitis is to get the blood glucose under control, eat fewer dietary advanced glycation end products, and then you got to take antioxidants and anti-inflammatories and move. Movement is huge. So I always like to put a picture of a monster so you can put that in your head that this is a monster protein and we want to avoid these if at all possible. Now, remember I told you cross-linking is important and we don't want scurvy. We don't want our gums to spontaneously bleed. When you have collagen, you've got the braided rope, you want normal connections at regular intervals with the proper strength and the proper distance to keep everything from sliding off and being dysfunctional, okay? It makes it work better. What happens with advanced glycation end products, these are not controlled by enzymes. It's not controlled by the genetic um, I guess, information that's being given to the tendon. So it's not a regulated process. Rather, these things just form haphazardly. If there's sugar hanging around the tendon, it's going to get a non-enzymatic, meaning you don't have to have an enzyme turned on. It's just going to happen spontaneously. You're going to get this little monster to come in and connect the, the fiber bundles, and then it's not going to glide properly, and it's not going to work properly. And it's going to induce reactive oxygen species and inflammation. So advanced glycation end products are a huge problem. Not a lot of people know about them, but it's happening all the time. They're there. You can't control it completely. It is part of life. But you can certainly control being overly filled with these monster proteins.